welcome to another episode of Tube Amp Theta with your host, Terry Dayton. Today, the subject is a 6550 amplifier. You ever wonder how to build one without blowing up? Let me show you. So here she is, the 6550 Class A amplifier, running a pair of OC3 regulators. 5U4 rectifier tube, gigantic power transformer, and the properly sized output transformer. Let me show you what the secret is to keeping your amp alive and running. First off, before you uh, decide to build a big amp like this, you got to find the proper iron. You can see here I've got a 120 milliamp power transformer, and then here's the properly sized output transformer for the 6550, KT88, or any of those big tubes you want to run single-ended Class A. If you choose a 6550 tube for your output, there's one thing you have to keep in mind. It's a finicky tube. It's not like a 6L6 or a 6V6 where you can run the screen voltage at almost the same plate voltage. The 6550, you got to throttle the screen voltage. In this case, down to about 200 volts. I elected to do this with a pair of OC3 regulators running in series. A lot of guys say, well, you can just voltage divide with a couple high wattage resistors. Well, no you can't, because as your plate voltage varies when you're pulling current, so will your screen voltage and your amp will go out of control. So let me show you the voltage and why I chose the OC3s. So for a quick peek, this is the cabinet that the 6550 amp will be housed in. It's got this beautiful window here. I'm going to put a power light here. All the controls will come out of the front. All right, so here we go to the amp. Here's the underside. You can see she's all point-to-point -point wired. Let me show you the uh, regulator tubes and how they react. All right, the amp is sitting here idling at about 65 milliamps plate current. So I've got my trusty Beckman 310 meter. I'm going to go over here and show you the plate voltage. So here we go. And we're running at about 447 volts plate, okay? Now this here resistor that you're looking at is the series dropping resistor feeding the voltage regulators, okay? So this line right here is actually the screen voltage, 216 volts. And if you look at the specs for this tube, we're right on the mark. To stabilize the screen voltage, I also added this 4.7 microfarad capped ground so that feeds the output tube. So when you get a current event, you know, like a big old bass note, that cap helps to stabilize those C3s. So why use voltage regulator tubes, you may ask? Why not these neat little tiny Zener diodes? Well, number one, they don't look as cool as these, do they? No, I don't think so. The other thing is, is the OC3 is a very inexpensive tube. You can get them for about a dollar a piece on eBay. And when you're playing and you look in your amp and see that purple glow, it makes it all worth it. Plus, they're great regulators. So the proof is in the pudding, right? Here we go. Got my scope hooked up. This is my trusty Awatsu 5702 scope, which is actually the first scope that I ever bought. I kept her. Great scope for audio, all right? Controls line up. We got mid, bass, treble, gain. Here's my input. So we'll bring up a little gain and you can see the beautiful sine wave. I'll mess with trouble a little bit. Okay. Here's the mid. Now I'm hitting her with about a 1k signal so bass isn't going to do much right now. But you can see the thing just has a great looking sine wave. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tube Amp Theta. Star, the 6552 in Class A operation. So soon, I'll be publishing some documentation if you want to build one, and I'll have somebody come over here and we'll do a live demo so you can hear the brilliance of the 6550 amp. Bravo! See you.